like we've all seen zombie films. Dawn of the Dead, The Living Dead, Warm Bodies. Many of us may even enjoy them. But if we've learned anything from watching zombie films, it's that if you don't contain a zombie invasion, everybody ends up dead. And what could be scarier than a zombie film? Zombie cells, that's what. They are real, they are scary, they are making you age. Today, we will talk about cellular senescence, the scariest of all the hallmarks of aging. Cellular senescence is one result of our cells aging. With very few exceptions, all of our cells age. This was discovered by Leonard Hayflick and Paul Moorhead in the 1960s, who found that after about 50 replications, cells begin to break down and lose function. Not only do cells naturally age as they divide, but several stress-inducing factors can accelerate this process, such as DNA damage, oxidative damage, abnormal cell growth, and the activation of genes that could favor cancer. As we explained in a previous video, the ends of your DNA are called telomeres, and they protect the rest of the DNA from damage. When cells reach their old age, their telomeres have been eaten up by cellular division, and their DNA is usually quite damaged. Eventually, telomeres reach a critically short length, at which point the cell cycle is arrested and the cells stop reproducing and wait around to be repaired. However, the DNA repair mechanisms of the cell are not always able to fix the damage. When this happens, one of two things follow. Either the cell is destroyed or it stays alive, becoming a zombie or senescent cell. Senescent cells, like zombies, look different from normal cells. They are wide, flat, deformed, and not easy to kill. Although these cells can no longer replicate, they still remain active on some level, spewing out chemicals that induce inflammation, other chemicals that interfere with the normal growth and survival of neighboring cells, and yet others that can switch on and off the wrong genes. This is what is widely known as the SASP, or Senescence Associated Secretory Phenotype. And it has been strongly associated with, you guessed it, age-related diseases, such as type 2 diabetes, atherosclerosis, and certain types of cancer. As these zombie cells build up in our bodies, they not only stay alive despite their loss of function, they prevent new cells from being made and can convert their healthy neighbors into senescent cells. That's how all zombie films begin. And honestly, it's bad news. In a study carried out by Tonneson Murray and colleagues, published in the Journal of Cell Biology in September 2019, they found that cells that had become senescent after treatment with chemotherapy actually ate their neighbors alive. You heard that right. It's called cellular cannibalism. After eating their healthy neighbors, senescent cells tend to survive much longer than non-cannibal cells. Again, very, very bad news. However, with biology, nothing is ever as simple as it is in the films. In fact, senescent cells are extremely useful. They aid in tissue repair and regeneration, along with wound repair, and they are associated with significant protection from cancer. Mouse models in which P53 a uh, protein associated with senescence is activated, show extraordinary protection against cancer, while switching senescence off leads to 
an acceleration of cancer development. So, what's going on? One explanation for this dual function has been attributed by rock star rejuvenation scientist Judith Campisi to antagonistic pleiotropy, or the ability for traits to be beneficial during youth but detrimental during old age. Senescent cells may be very useful for healing wounds and preventing cancer in our youth, but don't be fooled. As they accumulate in our bodies, they also lead to chronic inflammation, uh, tissue damage, and many more of the nasty effects that we associate with aging. So yes, senescent cells are not a problem in and of themselves, until we get old, that is. At which point they become a very, very big problem. You may be asking yourself at this point, Vera, we have a zombie invasion on our hands. Now who has the chainsaw? Thankfully, we have science. And that is like having the best stock chainsaw store in town. In the last few years, scientists have been working hard on finding ways to clear senescent cells from our bodies without disturbing healthy cells. They have identified and developed senescent cell-destroying drugs called senolytics to do the job. Right now, natural products such as quercetin, fisetin, and piperlongumin have been shown to clear senescent cells as well as FOXO4 and dasatinib, which is a cancer drug. And the list continues to grow. In 2011, one of the first studies to show that senolytics could actually clear senescent cells was done by John von Derser and his team at Mayo Clinic. They genetically engineered progeroid mice, that is, mice with artificially accelerated aging, to allow a drug to specifically target and kill their senescent cells. The scientists found that administering the drug to the mice made them age more slowly in some regards. For example, they could run for longer compared to untreated mice of the same age, and they had larger muscles. In 2017, a similar study was carried out by another group on both artificially and normally aged mice, and this time around, the scientists actually observed a reversal of some aspects of aging in both cases. Their kidney functions were significantly better, they were more responsive to physical stimuli, and their fur grew thicker. I mean, these were some sexy old mice. Since the sexy mice incident, Many biotechnology companies have also become interested in new ways to clear senescent cells from our bodies. And last year, Mayo Clinic researchers began human clinical trials in which they found that treatment with a combo of two senolytics, quercetin and dasatinib, brought improvements in physical function in patients suffering from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a chronic disease in the lungs, and diabetic kidney disease. It is expected that many more human trials will be carried out in the coming years, and this is certainly something to be excited about, especially if we want to look as good as those sexy mice in our 80s. But let's remember, many of these studies are still in their early stages, and much more proof will be needed before we can safely take these substances. So stay tuned for more developments, and unless you want to die before your time, like in the movies, get your chainsaws ready, people. We've got some zombies to kill. Thank you very much for watching this episode of X10, and a particular thanks to Lifespan Heroes. Their donations keep our show alive, and they help Lifespan.io's ongoing efforts to popularize, crowdfund, and speed up aging research. If you like what we do and would like to help us do it, you can join the Lifespan Heroes. 
at lifespan.io slash hero. And if you'd like to see more of our show, go to youtube.com slash lifespan.io and subscribe. Oh, and by the way, X10 will soon move to its own channel. You can already find it at the address below, but stay tuned for further updates on the official launch dates.